So as we look at, uh, before I talk about the symptoms of B6 deficiency, I really want to talk about another topic. Let's just make a little bit of room here uh, related that we didn't talk much about yet, and I said I would talk to you about, and that's the neurochemicals. So vitamin B6, you need it to produce dopamine. You need it to produce serotonin. You need it to make histamine. You also need it to make GABA, GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. These are, why are these important? These are all neurochemicals. Remember I said earlier that your brain needs vitamin B6 to properly function and develop? Well, this is some of the reasoning as to why. We need B6 to metabolize the amino acid. There's an amino acid you get from eating uh, proteins and some plant-based um, foods contain tyrosine as well, but B6 helps to convert tyrosine into dopamine, and then we need dopamine to get to epinephrine, which is the same thing as adrenaline. And so remember, these are stress neurotransmitters, and so if you're under a lot of stress, what happens, and one of the reasons why people under a lot of stress actually are depleted of vitamin B6 is because under stress, we're making, we're doing more of this, right? This gets turned up, it gets ramped up. We're making more adrenaline, noradrenaline, or epinephrine, norepinephrine. We're burning through more vitamin B6. And in that process, when we hit a limit, when we hit a rate limiting ability to metabolize here, then this starts to plummet, and then our ability to cope and adapt to stress also starts to deteriorate. Now, likewise, there's an amino acid called tryptophan You've, since we're talking about tryptophan, you know, a lot of you know the turkeys, right? That people eat around Thanksgiving time. The heavy turkey contains a lot of tryptophan. And so there's a lot of thought and a lot of uh, people talking about how when you eat that turkey, you get really sleepy, right? Because of the tryptophan. Tryptophan helps your body to produce serotonin. Okay. Serotonin is a major neurotransmitter as well. Very, very important for mood stabilization, for gut motility and gut function. Um, and a lot of women and men alike are taking serotonin reuptake inhibitors. There's a class of drugs or meds called SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And what those drugs do is they preserve serotonin from breaking down so that your body has it to use um, more aggressively. And so what happens is, is you know, that those drugs don't help you make more serotonin, they just preserve the serotonin that you make. And a lot of research shows that vitamin B6 deficiency, this is one of the reasons why it causes depression. And so many people that have um, the depression associated with vitamin B6 deficiency get put on SSRIs, but their doctors never check their, what? Their B6 levels. Now, remember I said earlier that B6 also helps to metabolize folate and you need folate as well to make serotonin. So there's two B vitamins that are necessary to make serotonin, B6 and folate. Folate activation is dependent on B6. So again, B6 is very, very important. And this is one of the reasons why depression is a common symptom. As we see here, depression is a symptom of vitamin B6 deficiency. Now, histamine is another one. You remember, histamine is important. It's a stimulant. People that are low histamine generally tend to be tired. If you've ever taken an antihistamine, you got sleepy, right? Like Benadryl, the medications, the over-the-counter allergy medicines, the, they're antihistamines. Well, they block histamine, and when they block histamine, they block that stimulation in your brain, and they make you really tired and sleepy and groggy, and this is why... A lot of people dread taking antihistamines during allergy season because they don't want to lose their whole day to fatigue and, and sleepiness. Now, some of the newer classes of medications don't create such a drowsy effect, but they're also not working as an antihistamine. Now, other things that block antihistamine, just FYI, your antacid medications, so acid meds. So if a drug, you're taking a drug to reduce your acids, you're also, in a part, you're inhibiting your histamine production. And so, again, we have, going back to what I was talking about, vitamin B6 is necessary for the proper production of histamine. And histamine is very important, not only as a neurotransmitter to help your brain stay alert and awake, but histamine is also important to help your body cope and deal with environmental allergens. Now, remember that histamine is a chemical we make to deal and neutralize uh, with these allergens. So very important molecule. We don't necessarily want to block it, even if it does come along with some of the symptoms associated with histamine 
uh, such as you know, watery, teary, itchy eyes, sneezing, coughing, that type of thing. And then we have GABA. Now, GABA can very simply be, be considered the, the breaks of stress. Okay, so if you're really under stress, your brain will make more GABA. GABA kind of helps calm the stress down. Kind of, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very calming uh, neurotransmitter. And again, you can't make GABA without vitamin B6. So if we look at this kind of holistically, right? Dopamine is a calming neurotransmitter. It also brings us peace of mind. Serotonin is a calming neurotransmitter that regulates depression and mood. GABA is a regulating neurotransmitter that puts the brakes on stress in the brain. So when you don't have adequate B6, these are three very big problems that can go wrong, creating an environment of, of anxiety in your head, right? So this is one of the reasons why, I don't think we have it on the board here, but we really should. Um, we could put anxiety as a symptom of vitamin B6 deficiency. Now this really goes hand in hand, PMS. There's actually a type of PMS, PMS meaning premenstrual syndrome, PMS type A. The A stands for anxiety. So when doctors diagnose uh, women with PMS, they usually use a letter behind the PMS, right? It's kind of like IBS diagnosis, IBS D would be IBS where you're having diarrhea, IBS C would be IB irritable bowel where you're having constipation. Well, with PMS, the A stands for anxiety. And so um, a lot of women do really, really well when they take B6 premenstrually. Now, interestingly enough, since we're talking about women and we're talking about hormones, let's make some room here. One of the other factors that I want you to understand is that if you're taking birth control, and so really what this boils down to is if you're on estrogen, estrogen pills, and this could be birth control, this could actually even be estrogen, uh, prescription estrogen as, you, as you're going through menopause, but es it doesn't have to just be birth control is my point, it's estrogen. Estrogen interferes with B6. And this is one of the, the ironies here because a lot of women that are suffering with PMS get put on birth control as kind of a catch-all to try to treat their PMS. And it can actually, by depleting B6, can actually make PMS A much, much worse. So if you're one of those that struggle a lot with anxiety, understand that it's very, very important that, um, that you don't do things that deplete your B6. What else can deplete your B6? We know birth control control can do it. We know that steroids can deplete B6. So if you're taking steroids chronically, a lot of people that are on chronic steroids become stress maladaptive and develop a lot of anxiety as well. And then we also know that anti-seizure medicines, if you're, if you're taking a drug for epilepsy or seizure disorder, those drugs can deplete vitamin B6. We know that if you take the antibiotics for tuberculosis, um, these medications can also deplete B6. So like isoniazid, which is, a, which is one of the primary treatments for tuberculosis, inhibits vitamin B6. So if you're doing any of those things, know that you can knock out your B6 and that could be potentially a problem with a lot of these. So again, chap lips, uh, swollen tongue, or what's known as glossitis, where your tongue swells up and turns really red. Now other B vitamins, the issue with B6 is that it overlaps with B2 and vitamin B3. Um, in terms of, of symptoms. So B2, B3, B6 all have very similar symptoms of deficiency, including the chapped lips, the swollen tongue or the glossitis, including headaches, um, and including skin inflammation, skin rashes, um, and then their seizures as well. Again, we learned this. This was actually learned, I think it was in the, in the 60s or 70s where the formulas were, I told you this earlier, they were depleted of vitamin B6. And so we saw little babies developing seizure problems. That's how we actually learned that that was a problem. And then poor memory as well. There are actually some linkages, some studies linking dementia to vitamin B6 deficiency as well. Parkinson's disease to vitamin B6 deficiency. Remember, Parkinson's disease happens when you lose your ability or capacity to start generating dopamine because there are certain area of the brain called the substantia nigra that is damaged. That's where a lot of your dopamine is produced, at least neurologically for the brain. Now, I understand too, I, I'm, I'm talking about the brain, right, and brain health, but you got to understand that the gut 
also produces dopamine and serotonin, right? The neurotransmitters, many of your neurotransmitters are also made in the gut, also needing vitamin B6. Uh, some research studies, let's tie this into gluten sensitivity. For those of you with any kind of gluten issue, um, where you're on a gluten-free diet, here's what we, what we know is about 20% of tested patients with gluten sensitivity, okay, with gluten sensitivity issues were tested low B6, okay, and, and here's the other thing, about 33, actually I think it was 37%, one of the more recent studies, tested deficient in folate and this, this particular study I'm citing, what they were looking at in this study was they were looking at homocysteine because the, the risk for heart disease is greater in those with gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. And they think that this is one of the reasons why is that even after being on a gluten-free diet for a prolonged period of time, um, the B6 and the folate are still low. And my, my opinion on that is that people that generally gravitate toward a gluten-free diet do it wrong. They eat processed garbage food that's labeled gluten-free that is devoid of B6 and devoid of adequate folate. And so they're, they're not helping themselves recover from a disease that we know can cause intestinal malabsorption and B vitamin deficiency. So when somebody gets a diagnosis of celiac disease, we already know that malabsorption is most likely one of their issues. And so they're already at, at, a, at a kind of in a, in, a, in a pit, if you will, of deficiency, meaning they're already at a lower place than the average person who doesn't have that problem. And so when you throw in all those processed gluten-free foods that are highly, um, highly chemically loaded and very, very poor, nutritionally speaking, very low in nutritional density, you can actually exacerbate this type of problem and make it worse. Um, so again, if you're gluten sensitive, 20% tested low vitamin B6. So very, uh, you know, odds are one in five, right? Just think of it that way. There are a lot of different disease linkages to vitamin B6 deficiency. And one of the big ones is anemia. Now there's a couple of different ways that B6 deficiency causes anemia. And one of them has to do with the synthesis of, there's a protein inside your red blood cells called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen so that your tissues and your cells can get adequate oxygen to support normal biological function. Well, you, it's very difficult to make hemoglobin. You need B6 to produce hemoglobin. There's a, there's a process to the production of hemoglobin biochemically in your body that requires vitamin B6. So that's one way. Vitamin B6 deficiency can lead to low levels of hemoglobin. So if you've ever had a blood test where your hemoglobin was low, sometimes, sometimes the doctor will say, when your hemoglobin's low, they'll say, oh, you're iron deficient. And they could be very wrong. Remember that B6 deficiency can cause low hemoglobin. Iron also deficiency can cause low hemoglobin. So can copper deficiency. So just looking at hemoglobin by itself in a vacuum doesn't really tell you which nutrient you could be low in. So, so just be aware of that. If you go to the doctor and your hemoglobin's low and they start pumping you full of iron, ask them to measure your iron, not just your hemoglobin. But this is oftentimes referred to as a microcytic anemia, meaning the, the red blood cell itself, because there's not enough hemoglobin molecule in it, the cell is too small. Micro means small, cytic means cell. So this is a small cell anemia can be caused by B6 deficiency. Now, interestingly enough, B6 deficiency can also cause a macrocytic anemia, meaning it can cause a large red blood cell anemia. And, and, and here's why. B6 is necessary to activate folate. Folate plays a role in the maturation process of your red blood cells. So your red blood cells, they're born very large and as they mature, they get smaller, okay? And if you don't have adequate folate activation from a B6 deficiency, this is how it can also contribute to a large cell anemia. So it can get tricky, which is why if you've struggled with anemia chronically, um, and you're tired all the time and you have shortness of breath and headaches because this is a headaches are a symptom of anemia as well, uh, then you really want to have that investigated to a much deeper level than just, you know, hey, having somebody tell you your hemoglobin's low, pump some iron 
into you without actually looking at your iron, your B6, your copper levels, etc. So plays a big role in two different kinds of anemia, important to know. There's research on B6 playing a role in cancer. I mentioned earlier heart disease. Um, heart disease, why? One of the big reasons for heart disease is that B6 actually helps regulate some of the chemical mediators produced by immune cells that deal with inflammation. So B6 deficiency, it's thought, can cause a hyperinflammation scenario, but also because of homocysteine. Homocysteine, remember, it's an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease, so it can drive up the risk for heart disease. And then, of course, neuropathy, vitamin B6, because it's necessary to form serotonin and dopamine and those other chemicals. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.